How's it going, ladies and gents, boys and girls? Jeff Benjamin with 9 to 5 Mac. This is Back to the Mac episode. I don't even know right now. I think it's episode 24, 25, but we're just going to reset. We're going to say episode two for 2022. So in this week's episode, we have a lot to talk about regarding the Mac Mini, including all the rumors and what we expect from the new 2022 Mac Mini refresh. But before that, we do have to talk about our giveaway from our last episode. I was giving away a couple of, well, one polishing cloth, but I think I'm just gonna give away both of them. And the winner for that is actually going to be Blair uh, G3 on the Instagram. Blair G3, Blair, I'll be in contact with you very shortly to get you those polishing cloths. Stay tuned because of course in this video we have a giveaway as well. Okay, so now let's take a look at some Mac Mini news. Let's get our ducks in a row, see where we stand for this Mac Mini refresh, which is rumored to be launching sometime early next month. So let's take a look right now. So back in May of 2021, Bloomberg reported about Apple's upcoming Mac plans, including the Mac Pro and the higher end Mac Mini. And it went on to note that the higher end Mac Mini would actually launch after Apple launched its MacBook Pro refresh, which came out last year, late last year, the 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pros. And those machines sort of laid the groundwork, the foundation of what to expect for the new Mac Mini, and that includes up to 64 gigabytes of RAM, a 10 core CPU, 16 or 32 graphics cores, and most importantly, those four ports instead of just two, the four Thunderbolt ports. So we look forward to this higher end Mac Mini very much, but of course that's not all. So back in August of 2022, uh, Bloomberg again reiterated its report that the higher end Mac Mini was still in the works, that it was on the way, and that the Intel model, which Apple still sells on its website today, would be around until this new Mac Mini higher end version launches. Bloomberg notes that the Intel Mac Mini, which Apple still sells today, will be going away once this new Mac Mini launches. But what's really interesting about this report is that it's noted that Apple will actually have an updated design for its new Mac Mini. And that's something that, I mean, a lot of people will, will no doubt be happy to hear because the Mac Mini has basically had the same design for over a decade, more or less, right? Uh, so that's really interesting. Now I should also note that John Prosser claims that the updated Mac Mini will have a new industrial design with a plexiglass-like reflective surface on top. I'm imagining that that means this is gonna be very similar to the design of the 24-inch iMac. Now another Bloomberg report, which came out just a few weeks ago, indicated that Apple will be holding an event soon, possibly on March 8th, which is a Tuesday and that's less than three weeks away. Now at this event, it's widely expected that we'll see the iPhone SE refresh with 5G support, but there should also be not only just one, but up to three new Macs according to the new Eurasian database update. So that indicates that we will see not just the Mac mini, but also a Mac laptop as well. So that's super interesting, no doubt, and I'm looking forward to it. What do you guys think? Do you think we're gonna see an updated Mac mini come March 8th? Let me know down below in the comments section. Okay, so let's talk about the Intel Mac Mini for a moment. Now I realize that compared to the M1 Mac Mini, it is horrendously slow, right? But there are some things about the Intel Mac Mini that are appealing, in fact, that give it a leg up over the M1 Mac Mini. For instance, the thing that stands out the most, having four physical Thunderbolt ports, it is what I missed most from the M1 Mac Mini by far. Now, along with that, the fact that you can only configure 16 gigabytes of memory on the M1 Mac Mini is a definite bummer when you're used to having 64 or even 128 gigabytes of memory. For the Intel Mini, which as you can see, Apple still sells on its store, but probably not for much longer. Now, if we go into the build to order configuration, you're gonna see where you can actually configure up to 64 gigabytes of RAM, which is a big increase over the 16 gigabytes of unified memory. I understand it's not exactly apples to apples here because the M1 Mac features that tightly integrated system on a chip with the unified memory on board. So when it swaps out to storage, for instance, it's obviously a lot faster than the Intel architecture. Now, with all that being said, one of the things I did like about the Intel Mac mini is that you could upgrade the RAM using aftermarket single outline DIMM modules, which could save you a boatload of money. But obviously that's probably never gonna be a thing 
with Apple Silicon. And then the Intel Mac Mini has boot camp compatibility, which was something I use quite often actually. And it's one of the reasons why I keep my Intel Mac around. But the good news is that even though we probably won't see boot camp in the future for Apple Silicon, the Windows Virtual Machine actually works a lot better than you might think. And finally, eGPU support. One of the big features of Intel Macs, especially the Mac Mini, which has a terrible integrated GPU, adding an external GPU is one of the best ways to upgrade your Mac Mini. Now, unfortunately, that's no longer possible with the M1 Mac, but honestly, I haven't really been missing eGPU support because the integrated GPU is a beast, especially on the M1 Macs an M1 Pro, but even the M1 GPU performs very well. But if you love having external graphics card capability, especially if you're running bootcamp and you like to run those Nvidia cards, that is definitely something that gives the Intel Mac Mini a distinct advantage over its Apple Silicon counterpart. So let's talk about my 2022 Mac mini refresh wish, wish list. That's really hard to say. It starts with IO. I want to see not just two Thunderbolt ports, at least four Thunderbolt ports would be amazing. That would be such a big win. Now, since it appears that we're following the same pattern of the MacBook Pro with the M1 Pro and the M1 Max, I think we'll see 64 gigabytes of RAM, and that's definitely what I want. More built to order options, more storage options. That will be a huge win as well for the 2022 Mac mini refresh. And it would be nice to see a design refresh because we've had this same design for the longest and the M1 Mac mini is basically an Intel Mac mini with the guts ripped out with the Apple Silicon put in there. And there's a lot of extra space that's going unused. That coupled with the IMAX design language, yeah, that's definitely on my wish list as well. And I'm not trying to sound petty, but I think Apple should definitely consider upgrading the speaker in the Mac Mini. Now I understand most people are either gonna add their own speakers after the fact, but they're not gonna use sound at all. But I'd like to see Apple at least try to make the Mac Mini speakers sound somewhat decent, right? So that's my wish list. I don't think any of them are really unreasonable. I think we'll probably see at least two or three out of the four. What do you guys think? Are there any other items or things you wanna see different about the new Mac Mini? Let me know down below. So we've already discussed several ways to upgrade your Mac mini, you know, upgrading the RAM, adding external storage, adding an eGPU, but this thing takes it to the next level. This is from Sonnet. This is the Duo Moto Modular Thunderbolt Expansion System. So there are three different modules, the eGPU module, the Echo 3 module, and of course the X Mac mini module. And what's cool is that there's both a single and a dual desktop enclosure, which we'll talk about. Here is the Radeon 6900 XT GPU, obviously a beastly card, right? So this is what I'm going to use inside the eGPU module, which is itself inside the dual desktop enclosure, which you can see right here. So on the left side, you have the X Mac mini module on the right side, you have the eGPU module and here's the rear of the unit. Here's where your video output will be for your GPU. You have the Thunderbolt port on the back, along with the power connection for your eGPU module and the power connection for the X Mac mini module. So we're going to remove each module out of the desktop enclosure. So just take the screw out like that. And there we go. So here you can see the empty dual desktop enclosure. So here's the inside of the X Mac mini module. You can see the IO card, which can also accommodate two M.2 SSDs for up to 16 terabytes of external storage. So that interfaces directly with your Mac via Thunderbolt 3. Pretty handy. You also see that USB port hidden away and that can be used for license dongles for things like Pro Tools. So that can be very handy to have. Here's the front IO panel, daisy chainable Thunderbolt port, two USB-C ports, USB-A port as well. Here's the little button on front that actually is a mechanical method for powering on and powering off your Mac mini inside the enclosure. So when you press that, it presses the little lever and that actually physically presses on the Mac mini power button. I'll show you how that works in just a second. So we're going to go ahead and install the Mac mini inside the X Mac mini chassis. 
Just slide it all the way back and then secure it using the captive screws. Very easy to get this thing installed. All right, so it's installed and there we go. Super simple, super easy. So like I was saying, that button, when you press it, it actually will physically press the power button on the Mac mini to turn it on and off. It's pretty awesome. Okay, so now it's time to connect the Mac mini to the IO card via Thunderbolt. So we're just gonna pull this little rubber fastener off, slider Thunderbolt cable through, secure the rubber fastener, and connect it to the Mac mini. And now connect the opposite end to the IO card inside. Just like that. So we're good. All right, so the next step is to simply go ahead and reinstall this guy inside of the dual desktop enclosure. But before we do that, we're gonna go ahead and set up our dual moto eGPU enclosure. All right, so here's the inside. You can see the pair of Noctua fans, which is always a good thing. And you also see your six plus two pin power connections. Here's the PCB and and we're ready to install our GPU. There's that Thunderbolt port. All right, so here's the Radeon 6900 XT. And we're gonna screw it into place. And then we'll just connect the power connections just like that, and we're good to go. So now it's just a matter of sliding that into the dual desktop enclosure, like that. And we'll slide the Mac Mini, the X Mac Mini enclosure just like this and then you just secure them with the screws and that's pretty much it folks i mean it doesn't really get any simpler than that so you have of course your two power connections you have the power connection for your mac mini as well so you'll still need the cable for your mac mini to power that on and then via thunderbolt connect the mac mini to the egpu module and then connect from the egpu's io to your display Super simple, super easy. All right. So we'll go ahead and get that all set up and we're good to go. So let's first of all, run some benchmarks with Geekbench. Let's run a quick compute benchmark with the integrated graphics, the Intel UHD graphics 630. So we'll go ahead and run that. And you can see the OpenCL score 4798. Now remember that number. And now we're gonna run the metal benchmark. And very similar, right? For that integrated graphics. And just for giggles, here's Unigen Heaven running down the integrated graphics. And you can see the frames per second. It's about six frames per second there. So obviously not very good. That's where the Sonnet Dual Moto comes in with its eGPU module and it should significantly increase the graphics performance of your Mac mini. So we're just gonna press the button to turn it on and it powers on just like that. And now let's perform the same benchmarks, but this time using the Radeon 6900 XT GPU. All right, so here is Geekbench. We'll run the OpenCL first. You can see the GPU there. Let's run the compute benchmark let's see what we get. So the other one was like right below 5,000. Here you can see 104,000 OpenCL score. Obviously it just runs circles around the integrated graphics. No surprise whatsoever, right? But that's the great thing about the eGPU. You simply plug in a Thunderbolt 3 cable and you instantly make your Mac that much faster from a graphics point of view. All right, so let's run the metal benchmark. And you can see way, way, way faster than the UHD graphics. Again, it goes without saying, right? And just for fun, here's the Heaven Benchmark. Again, the same story, a lot better performance thanks to the external GPU. So ladies and gentlemen, that has been episode number two for 2022 of Back to the Mac. And this time around, I'm giving away an Apple gift card, which can be used at the App Store. It can be used at apple.com. It can be used inside an Apple store. So if you like to win that, you're gonna find the code down below in the description. And the first person that grabs that code gets the $25, right? All I ask is that once you grab it and redeem it, leave a comment and let us know that you, you got it and that you redeemed it, okay? That's it.
So again, thanks for watching. In future episodes, I'm gonna reinstate the Ask Jeff segment where you can just ask me questions. I'm gonna to try to answer them in future episodes. So if you have a question, leave it down below in the comments as well. Again, thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next episode. This is Jeff with 9to5Mac. Thank you.